All right. Today we're going to look at lesson 9.6 and we're going to work with the discriminant. All right. We're going to work with the discriminant. Now this word showed up yesterday um, when we were working with the quadratic formula and that is because the discriminant is part of the quadratic formula. So you'll notice on the screen I've given you the entire uh, quadratic formula because you need to know it for your pre-quiz tomorrow, your quiz on Monday, and even your test next week. All right? So I'm putting it up there because I want you writing it. I want you memorizing it. But the discriminant is the portion of the quadratic formula that is underneath the radical. Now, all the way back in 9.1, all right, all the way back last week, we um, worked with the square root of b squared minus 4ac. All right, today the discriminant is just the b squared minus 4ac. So when we work this uh, formula, we are not bringing the radical sign with us. Okay, now let's talk about what the discriminant is helping us find. If you remember from yesterday, the quadratic formula how many answers did we have every single time we worked the quadratic formula? Two. And what were we finding? Do you remember that discussion from yesterday? We found two values for x. What did those two values represent? Listen to, listen to what I'm asking, okay? The answers. What did the answers represent? Gavin, what did you say? The x-intercepts. Very good. All right, we were finding where the graph of the equation would cross the x-axis. So today what they're asking us to do, instead of finding the exact x values, they want us to find how many x values or x-intercepts there would be. So that's what the discriminant will tell us. The discriminant will tell us if we have two solutions, one solution, or no solution. Will my graph cross the x-axis twice, once, or not at all, all right? So that is what we are doing today. When finding the solutions to the discriminant, you are finding the number of intercepts, not the actual intercepts, but the number of intercepts. So when we work out this problem, this b squared minus 4ac, which again, make sure you have memorized as the discriminant for your quiz um, tomorrow, if your answer comes out to be a positive number, then you have two solutions. If your answer comes out to be a zero, there is one solution. And if your um, discriminant comes out to be a negative number, then you have no solutions, all right? So let's go to example number one. Now the instructions say, tell if the equation has two solutions, one solution, or no solutions, all right? Tell if the equation has two solutions, one solution, or no solution. So let's look at letter A. And actually, let's go back to this for just a second. When we're dealing with or trying to identify A, B, and C, all right, when we're trying to identify A, B, and C, what form does our equation have to be in? Standard form, all right? So just to review for a second, standard form is AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero. So remember your terms, your X term, your X, your x squared term, your x squared term, and your, um, and your constant all have to be on one side of the problem and it has to be set equal to zero. So looking at example number one, is letter A in standard form? Yes, yes it is. So we can very easily identify A, B, and C. Javion, what is the value of A? One. What's the value of B? Yeah. And what's the value of C? Four. Awesome. Now, we're going to write the discriminant down every single time, all right? So the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Why are we writing it down? Because the more we write it down, the more we're going to memorize it. The easier it is to memorize it. So what is going in place, Javion, of b? Negative 2. Minus 4 times what goes in place of a? And what goes in place of c? Four. Awesome. All right. Order of operations. Oh, this is negative two squared. What do I have to do first? Draw me on. Exponent. So what do we get when we work the exponent? Do we get negative? Good. Remember we discussed B is always squared. So that value will always be positive. All right. 
based on this part of the problem, will my answer for this portion of the problem be positive or negative? Why negative? Good. There's only one negative, which is an odd number, so my answer will be negative. And what is 4 times 1 times 4? 16. So, Javion, what is 4 minus 16? All right. It's very important that you get this right because if you put a positive 12 and it's supposed to be a negative 12, then your next answer is going to be to everything's going to be wrong. All right. So, Javion, if our discriminant has a negative value, how many solutions does this problem have? Uh, no, solutions. no solutions. Which means when I graph or if I were to graph that problem, how many times would it touch the x-axis? None. All right. Remember, that's what we're finding. How many solutions, how many times does the graph cross the x-axis? And this one would cross not at all. All right, any questions? All right, Michelle, is letter B in standard form? All right, so what's A equal? Three, B equals five, and C equals, awesome. All right, everyone together, what is the discriminant? B squared minus four AC, awesome. Michelle, what goes in place of B? Minus four times three times, good. What do we solve first? And what's five squared? For this portion of the problem, is my answer gonna be positive or negative? Why positive? There are two negative signs, which is an even number, so it will be positive. And what's four times three times one? Awesome, what's 25 plus 12? And since my answer is a positive number, how many solutions does this problem have? Two. Two. Which means if we were to graph it, this graph would cross the x-axis two times. Because remember, the discriminant is helping us find out how many solutions, how many times the graph would cross the x-axis. All right, Ian. In a later chapter, are we going to have to graph it? Yeah, well, this chapter, but after this test. Yes, we're going to learn how to graph parabolas. All right, anybody else? All right, take a minute with the person beside you or behind you and work letter C. So this equation is in standard form, meaning, Kayla, what is A equal? What is B equal? And what is C equal? Good. Remember, anytime we have a variable and nothing in front of it, it's an understood one. So that's where her negative one came for letter A. All right, together, class, what's the discriminant? Um, B squared. B squared. Awesome. All right, Kayla, what's going in place of B? Ten. Awesome. All right, what's negative 10 squared? All right, this portion of the problem is going to be plus or minus? Minus, minus y? There's an odd number of negative signs. There's three of them. And then what is 4 times 1 times 25? It's 100. Good. 4 times 25. And what is 100 minus 100? Zero. Zero. Now, you'll notice we've been boxing in our value and we box in uh, the number of solutions. So, if this is zero, if the value of the discriminant is zero, Kayla, how many um, solutions do we have? One solution. Which means, if we were to graph this problem, we would um, touch the x-axis one time. All right, any questions? Now, I want you to look at example B. All right, it says use the related equation to find the number of x-intercepts. So have we changed what we're trying to find? No. no, they just changed the wording. In example one, they said tell if there are one solution, two solutions, or no solutions. Here they say find the number of x-intercepts. Well, if we know that the 
x-intercepts are the solutions, then we recognize they're asking us to do the same thing. They're just wording it different. So, first question, is letter A in standard form? Yes. Almost. Well, we got to the zero. All right, we got to make the y a zero. Then we can say that it is in standard form. All right, so we got to make the y zero. Then we can say it's in standard form. All right, so let's identify, um, read. What's A equal? Um, one, B, six, and C. Three. Awesome. All right, everyone together, what is the discriminant? B squared minus 4AC. Okay, I have more than three people in this class. So B together, let's give the discriminant. B squared minus 4AC. Very good. All right, read. What's going in place of B? What's going in place of A? One. And what's going in place of C? Three. What do we do first? Uh, exponents. Which is? 36. 6 squared is 36. Will my second part be plus or minus? Uh, minus. Minus what? Um, 12. 4 times 1 is 4, times 3 is 12. What is 36 minus 12? All right, the solution or to the discriminant is positive. So how many solutions are there for this equation? Two. Two solutions. Which, let me say again, just means if we were to graph this equation, it would touch the x-axis two times. All right, take a minute. I want you to work letter B and letter C, all right, with a partner or by yourself. All right, Javion, what's the first thing we got to do to letter B? All right, got to change that Y to a zero. And then we have X squared plus 6X plus 10. So Javion, what's A equal? B and C. Awesome. All right, what's the discriminant, everyone? Awesome. All right, what goes in place of B? Minus 4 times times. Okay. 6 squared is 36. It's going to be minus 40. What's 36 minus 40? So my answer is negative, meaning I have how many solutions? No solutions. How many of you got negative 4 and no solutions? Awesome. Pretty easy? All right, let's look at letter C, and then we will be done. Tatiana. I haven't heard from Tatiana today. All right. Is this in standard form? No. All right, so what do we do first? Turn that Y into a zero. Now is it standard form? Yeah. Good. So what is A equal? Yeah. B equals? Yeah. And C equals? Yeah. All right. Everyone, the discriminant? B squared minus 4AC. All right. Gavin, take over. What it goes in place of B? Um, six. Times? times. All right. Ian, take over. What happens next? Uh, the exponent so it's 36 minus 36 equals 0, which is one solution. Very good. The value of the discriminant comes out to be 0, and that means there is one solution. This graph would cross the x-axis one, one time. time. All right. And that is how you use the discriminant. 